Hello and welcome to California Bountiful. I'm your host Aubrey Aquino and today we're hanging out at the San Diego Botanic Garden in Encinitas. This is a 37 acre urban oasis filled with miles of trails and ocean views. They have thousands of plant species here that are all set up in uniquely themed gardens to represent the many habitats and regions of the world. So what better way to kick off this show than to get a taste of this place. San Diego Botanic Garden is the premier botanic garden for San Diego County and a large portion of Southern California. And what we're really about is aggregating this amazing collection of plants. We have over 5,000 different species of plant and growing them in one place so that people can understand the diversity of the plant kingdom and so that we can preserve, conserve, educate about, and research on plants. Ari Novi is a plant biologist who's passionate about what they have growing on. If you really sort of pull out to the biggest level, Human beings have three ways of getting stuff, right? We can either mine it you know, from, some, from somewhere in the land, we can pull it out of the ocean in one fashion or another, or we can grow it. And everything that's grown is agriculture. So whether you're growing trees for wood, or you're growing tomatoes for tomato sauce, or you're growing orchids for the beauty in your home, all of this is agriculture. And when asked about his favorite plant? What I always say is, is that the chocolate tree, the Obroma cacao, which is the, the Amazonian tree that's now grown all over the tropics to produce chocolate for the whole world, that's my favorite because when you take a kid in and you show them all these plants, and you go, hey, this is the one where chocolate comes from, they're like, Whoa, now you got me, this is important, and I, I, I'm starting to see why I should pay attention to plants. He had me at chocolate, but then it came time to explore even more of the Botanic Garden's deliciousness. Right now we're in the subtropical fruit garden, and the really amazing thing about the San Diego Botanic Garden and any botanic garden is the diversity of plants that we can grow, and that includes the diversity of fruit trees and fruit plants that we can so grow So this here. is where we would find things that we can actually eat. Yes, so here we have some interesting plants that you might not otherwise see. Uh, do you know what this is? I think I've seen that before. Definitely looks like a hand, looks like fingers. Yes, it definitely does. Um, this is a Buddha's hand fruit or a fin fingered citron. Uh, it is Citrus Medica variety Sarcodactylus. Ooh. And um, unlike most citrus fruit that we grow for the fleshy, juicy insides, mm -hmm. this is all rind and pith. And so if you take a smell, it's very fragrant. So it's used to, um, as a fragrance oh, in good. spaces. Yes, it's used as a zest, it can be candied, it can be put in alcohol, it's oh, wow. used as a traditional medicine, um, but it doesn't have anything you'd really want to chew on inside. So what do we have? on this tree right here. So growing above us is one of my favorite fruits. It's white sapote. I would describe it as very custardy, a very smooth Ooh, texture. Custard. It's mm -hmm. like a pear, but without the gritty graininess. Okay, I'm gonna um, try. So we're gonna try a couple. Okay, great. Oh, you got a couple there. We did, we managed to get a couple. So this is a really great example of one that's not quite ripe. If you feel that it's very hard, not gonna oh, yeah. be very tasty. You might like a rock. This like a rock, yeah, and about as flavorful. Um, you could let this sit on the counter to ripen a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's really ideal to pick it when it's got a little bit of a give to it. Do you see how it's already kind of oh, smushy? Yeah. Which is why you won't find it in supermarkets okay. because it's very hard to store and transport. Um, but would you like to try this today? Yeah, sure. So we'll cut this open. Oh, look, you're prepared. I'm ready, yes, all right. And there's several large seeds in there. And because we didn't clean this and there's a little So is this related to like apples? This is actually in the Rutaceae family, which is the citrus family. So oh. it's related to the citrus we just looked at. This is a seed you want to avoid, but if you want to just eat some of that inner flesh, okay. I'll just scoop yeah, a little out for you. Yeah, and I'll, yeah, tell me what you think it tastes okay, like. It's, it's very okay. mushy, again, why you're not going to find it in the supermarket. Mmm, that, that is like that custard that you described. Mm -hmm. Very good, that's yummy. So I know this, these are bananas. So. Yes, you are right. We do have uh, quite a few different uh, varieties of bananas here, and there are a lot that are out there. We're used to the same species of banana, and variety of banana at the store. Right. All taste the same. Yeah. If you grow them yourself, and if you travel around where bananas are grown, there is so much amazing, unique uh, flavor. Okay, let's try this one. It's not cooperating. Here, I got it. It's so tiny. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm just not my, my peeling skills. Here we go. <gasps> just like a banana. It is a banana. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be so shocked. Just a little different. <laughs> so some will be a little starchier, some will be sweeter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but Give it really a try. Just like a banana. Well, what are these little guys?
guys these tiny oranges. Yeah, that's exactly what they look like. They're a hybrid between a kumquat and another citrus that has a kumquat-like fruit. Mm -hmm. You can eat the skin, you can oh. eat the whole thing, and they're very tart and juicy and delicious. You said that you can eat the... You can eat the whole thing. Really? Skin okay. Skin and all. You want to make sure they're nice and orange. Okay. <laughs> yeah, make sure it's ripe. They're okay. a little bit tart, but it's part of the... Mm. Part of the nice flavor. Very juicy. Oh wow, and they're really soft. I didn't mm -hmm. think when I bit into it that I was gonna bite into it so easily. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Brandy. This yeah. has been a lot of fun. Still to come, we'll dig into some local provision. But first, they grow beer. We take you to a Northern California farm with homegrown hops. Stay with us, this is California Bountiful. California Bountiful is brought to you by the California Farm Bureau. We need someone to be there, knowing they'll always care. Someone who lights your way each and every day. Doing what you love is everything So we can celebrate the joy it brings There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side Golden Sky Country Music Festival Coming to Sacramento October 14th and 15th With Eric Church All you gotta do is put a drink in my hand John Party Aaron Morris, Parker McCullough, and Jordan Davis, Lady Wilson, Winona Judd, and more. Golden Sky Country Music Festival at Discovery Park in downtown Sacramento. Passes starting at $10 down at goldenskyfestival.com. Welcome back. In the northern California town of Dixon, just off I-80, you'll find a beer version of a winery. Born out of a challenge to grow local hops, they're now brewing the many pints of success. We're in the middle of a hop yard. Uh, the hops are asleep right now, so they're not, uh, they're kind of under the covers, but uh, they fill this this field up where you can't even see through it later on this year and of course they go into our beer so this is kind of where we start brewing we start by farming we grow beer that's the focus at the Roostaller farm in Dixon and it's also what sets them apart you can't grow hops in St. Louis you can't grow them in Boston or Texas but the weather the soil the access to water we have a lot of water here, makes it where we can actually grow hops. And historically, this greater Sacramento area was the largest hop growing region in the world. We shipped hops back to the old world, England and Germany. And so, you know, as we got started, we kind of were challenged and then encouraged and inspired to, to grow hops and uh, to grow beer. We have an opportunity to do it differently. We can actually not just have a physical location that combines all these ingredients and makes beer, but we can actually start by making the ingredients and growing the ingredients. And just like in wine or peaches or pears or milk or anything, or uh, cheese, that product can reflect, you know, we'll borrow a French word, the terroir, it can reflect the climate and the soil and that year and, and what was unique about it. And what we found is that that's possible with beer, that beer can not just be reflective of, of the people and the machines, but it can also be reflective of the, the climate, the air, the soil, that growing season. So it is an agricultural product. It's not just a, a water-based product that you drink, it's an agricultural product. And you know, it doesn't just stop with, or begin or end with hops, but you know, we've used walnuts in beer, we've used lemons and beer. So a lot of the other things that grow in this area uh, can be used to make beer that's unique and, and truly local, not just, you know, made down the road. 
Wait, so is it tough to grow hops? It's very, very difficult. Part <laughs> of the, it was, it's easier to grow walnuts than it is hops. Hops are one of the most labor intensive things to grow. You know, that trellis is 18 feet tall, so you gotta get up there. Um, they're very susceptible to certain mites and pests that are prevalent here in the valley. So you need to watch them very carefully. You need to give them a lot of water during certain times of the year. They're finicky, but it's a magical thing to see these things grow. When it's 100 degrees out, they'll grow a foot a day. So they'll literally almost oh, grow wow. right in front of you. <laughs> a foot a day. A foot a day. And so it's incredibly kind of gratifying to, you know, you walk down this path one day and mm -hmm. then you walk down it a week later and it looks different because the hops have actually kind of that grown so right cool. before your own eyes. The farm also houses several animals who all play a part in the day-to-day -day operations. Those guys are partly here to enjoy looking at, but they're our workers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of animals that you see and there's a lot of animals you don't see mm -hmm. that go into making uh, to growing things, whether it's hops or walnuts or what have you. And so that ecosystem, if it's in balance and having birds and animals are part of that balance, then you don't need to introduce chemicals. You don't have to spray. You don't have to, you know, if there's a little more of that kind of a bug, you don't have to go get a miticide or a pesticide. You just in hope the birds will come and feast on that buffet or the chickens will come and you know <laughs> take take advantage of that right that the bounty inspired by their roost dollar namesake and fueled by enthusiasm behind the cross section of ag and beer the goal is to produce the highest quality most unique tasting beer in the world it's more maybe our gut but it feels like it tastes better and it maybe feels better to make it this way just ahead, a San Diego restaurant that lives up to its farm-to-table philosophy. Plus, a Central Valley gourmet shop known for making a super tasty almond butter milkshake. We need someone to be there, knowing to always care. Someone who lights your way each and every day. Doing what you love is everything So we can celebrate the joy it brings There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side The California Farm Bureau has protected the diverse agricultural interests in the Golden State for over a century. As part of the California Farm Bureau, you'll add your voice to the combined strength of over 34,000 farmers, ranchers, and families through our state. That means more connections, more influence, and more opportunity to fight for the issues that impact your life. With your support behind us, California Farm Bureau's robust government affairs, federal policy and farm pack, and legal teams work tirelessly to advocate at all levels of government, protecting and promoting our shared way of life. Together, California Farm Bureau and our members are standing up for farmers, ranchers, and families throughout the Golden State every day, working to cultivate a bountiful future for all Californians. Welcome back. We're discovering a Stanislaus County farming staple is the secret ingredient to a famous milkshake. And our Farm Bureau Foodies insider Anna Genesi talks to the farmer providing the local flavor. We are at Sperry Ranch right now with Brian. Brian, thanks for having us. So can you tell us a little bit about Sperry Farms and this beautiful property? Absolutely, yeah. Sperry Farms is a fifth generation farming operation. Uh, I own and operate with my brother-in-law, Wes Sperry. He's kind of the science guy and the guru uh, behind the orchard. Okay. And like I said, fifth generation, it goes way back into the mid 1800s. There's a lot of rich farming history right here in the Central Valley. 
This is such a beautiful orchard. And as you can tell, we are like right on the eve of full blossom. Um, and so for folks at home who don't know, what is so special about blossom and the bees and all that's going on in the orchard to produce that nut? Right, this is kind of our opening season for almonds here. So we got the sun out, there's a lot of excitement happening right now, but the bees are in, they've arrived from afar. And these trees in a week or two are gonna be full bloom, full blossom. It's gonna be a total whiteout out here. So it'll start the cross pollination process. Okay, so maybe folks don't know at home, actually bees travel to California from near and far. They come visit our orchards during this time of year. And while they're here, our almond growers are amazing hosts to them. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you provide as a grower in this orchard to keep the bees happy, healthy, and doing the worker bee stuff that they do? I can, I can also answer the cross-pollination uh, discussion I was having. Most yeah. people don't know what that is. Yes, so you. the bee will land on one flower from one variety, there's multiple varieties out here, and we'll fly over to another variety. It will gather pollen on its legs and body. Wherever that happens, there's an almond. So the bees okay. really start that cross-pollination process, and we are very proud that our bees do leave here stronger. Uh, they get all sorts of great nutrients from the flowers uh, and the nectar, and it's including amygdalin. They really are here to build the hive, build the strength, and start their season as well. Amazing, well thank you for sharing this beautiful orchard with us, and in a couple of weeks, if we're to pop back in, what are these trees gonna look like? It's a total whiteout. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be a flower show out here. So depending on when you're out here and walking through, uh, if it's earlier on and it's full bloom, you'll have a really strong, beautiful nectar smell as the bees are doing their work midday. And then if you hit the end of bloom, yeah. it kind of turns into almost a whiteout snowstorm out, <laughs> out here. And actually it looks it looks like snow on the ground Speaking as it's, it's blanketed uh, with, uh, uh, petals on the ground here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian, for telling us a little bit about the beautiful orchard today. Thanks for coming out. It's great having you. And of course, Anna caught up with the sister duo mixing up their famous Central Valley shake. in Robert's Fairy Gourmet Kitchen. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Stacy and Kim, the dynamic sister duo who helps bring Robert's Fairy Gourmet and what we know of it today to fruition. Can you tell us a little bit about Robert's Fairy Gourmet? Sure, so this store has been here nearly 40 years. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Kim and Nick and I are the third uh, local family to own the okay. business. Okay, so for our folks at home who may not know where Robert's Fairy <laughs> is in Stanislaus <laughs> County, tell us how do we find our way out here? We're about eight miles east of okay. Waterford, California, on your way up to Lake Don Pedro, LaGrange. So as folks are traveling up to visit these great places, they stop in for the famous milkshake that has the local spin. And what's the local spin? We add a dollop of our handmade almond butter. Amazing. And the almonds that you use for this very jar came from where? <laughs> Uh, the field right outside the doors of the store. This is a local favorite. Yes. What's your favorite flavor? My favorite is the vanilla almond okay. butter. I do have a holiday favorite, which is the coffee with candy cane. Oh, well, that yeah. sounds amazing. Stacy, what about you? Your favorite, dear? Oh, definitely our coffee milkshake with okay. coffee grounds. It's really good. So I've got our vanilla okay. shake scooped here, and I'm gonna add some of our almond butter. Yum. We made this fresh this morning. Thank you. Uh, we do make it in very small batches, and you can buy it here in the store as well. Okay. So I'm gonna add a dollop. Okay, so vanilla ice cream, the scoop of almond butter. Yep. And just a splash of milk. Okay. Uh, we like our shakes thick around here. Okay. Oh my gosh, I can hear how thick it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get the last of that almond butter in there. So here we have it, vanilla almond butter shake. And I just wanna make a point that when we say thick, we really mean <laughs> thick. <laughs> you can request it. a thinner shake from us, and nah. some people do, but this is what we do naturally. So. Love it. Yeah. Here you go, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Of course we have to taste test. Creamy and rich. Oh my gosh. I think this is just lunch today. <laughs> We're not gonna count calories. We're just gonna enjoy. Okay, let's see what you think. All right. Okay. Ladies, will you join me? <laughs> sure thing. Oh my gosh. All right, ham and butter. Vanilla milk. Yes. Mm. Mm. That's really good. Yeah. Super creamy. Yeah. I can taste the butter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think people are surprised that it's not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. I think they have kind of a sweeter um, image in their mm -hmm. mind when they order it. And it's so 
just that is really yeah, we're yeah, just gonna like driving. one more before we it's for you oh <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anna. I'm going to have to find my way to Robert's Ferry Gourmet because I want a taste of that almond butter shake. I do love a good milkshake and another sweet treat I enjoy is honey because honey is good for you. Hi, I'm Tawny. I'm a dietitian, author, and the owner of the popular food blog, Kroll's Corner. Today we are talking all about honey. And as a dietitian, I'm often asked if honey is healthier than eating other sugars. Well, the upside of choosing honey as your sweetener of choice is that it contains certain health properties that other sugars don't have. The carbohydrates help fuel our bodies, and honey actually has a lower glycemic index value than sugar, which means it doesn't raise blood sugar levels as quickly. The antioxidants may boost our body's immunity and protect against inflammation. And lastly, honey can help improve cough frequency and cough severity if you have an upper respiratory infection. So if you're not taking advantage of honey, start cooking with it today. My honey balsamic Brussels sprouts and my five ingredient energy bars are just two ways of incorporating honey into your diet. To find more ways to use honey, visit curlscorner.com and get busy enjoying nature's gold. We're not done yet. Straight ahead, we're going into the butcher shop and getting to the meat of our next story. We need someone to be there, knowing they'll always care. Someone who lights your way each and every day. Doing what you love is everything So we can celebrate the joy it brings There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side Are you looking to uncover more of the bounty of California's rich, diverse, and delicious food and wine scene? Then it's time to get social with us. Find even more great content from Farm to Fork and everything in between, like recipes behind the scenes on food and wine tours, plus useful info on what's good for you and so much more. Join an engaging community of like-minded foodies and tell us what great story ideas you have for us, too. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the conversation now. Find, follow, and talk to us on social at CA Bountiful. You love your pet and would do pretty much anything for them. But sometimes pet healthcare costs can make your wallet growl. That's why we created My Pet Protection, pet insurance designed exclusively for employees like you. Get reimbursed for eligible veterinary expenses. Enjoy extra perks like Vet Helpline, Pet Rx Express, and more. Use any vet anywhere. Signing up is easy. Just tell us about your pet and choose your level of reimbursement. My Pet Protection is available only through your employer. Get a no obligation quote today. Not too far from here at the San Diego Botanic Garden is Solana Beach, where you'll find Ranch 45. There, they're all about serving San Diego with delicious food made with local provisions. There's no one way to describe Ranch 45. It's a restaurant and cafe with its own butcher shop. We have a great partnership with Brant Beef. Uh, local farm out of Brawley, California. We have the regulars, ribeye, New York's fillets, but we also do picanha, um, which is cool out here, but picanha is in Brazil, is that cut of meat. We use oxtails, we do uh, carne asada with sirloin flat meat, we do roast, chuck rolls, we do brisket, we do ribs, we do bone and short ribs, anything from a cattle. Um, you looking for, we can get it there. <laughs> Ranch 45 embodies a locally sourced food philosophy, nourishing the body and mind. Customers come in and they want to know where brisket comes from, or they want to know where the culotte comes from. And so we're able to allow them to, to see, obviously because we have the diagram <laughs> on the wall, uh, but also talking to them about different cuts and how to cook certain steaks. Because most people go into a grocery store and you pick up a steak and there's no one there to say, well, how do you cook a brisket? or how do you cook a tri-tip? So we can give them our tips and some recipe items and, and we make spice blends here and barbecue sauces for our customers to take home right on the spot. And of course, Chef Duval was ready to demo his culinary skills for us too. I chose to make some, uh, some oxtail stew today um, because I think um, cooking food from the home and I think Every chef has a recipe that they're just near and dear to them. Um, and for me, a lot of people draw influence from their moms or their grandmoms. Um, I like to draw inspiration from, you know, my grandfathers. 
So uh, my grandfather's one of his dishes was oxtails. Um, so I, lo I love to do oxtail stew. Um, it's a hearty dish, times have been tough, and we look for bargains, and oxtails are a bargain, especially when you can go to a butcher and get the oxtails cut at the butcher shop. Yeah. Um, and it's a little bit cheaper than having to go and have someone else do it. Um, in, a, in a big chain grocery store. Well, and, and different cultures use oxtail in different ways. Absolutely. And so this particular dish comes from your roots, which, yes. talk about that. So my grandfather's Haitian. Um, my wife's Filipino. Um, so they would typically use curry or peanut butter or fish sauce, but I don't use any of that. <laughs> um, I kind of like to keep it traditional with the uh, jerk seasoning that we make uh, in-house. Um, our regular oxtails, some root vegetables, um, some brant beef bone broth, and just kind of just stew it down with some steamed white rice, um, and then we just let it go from there. We got brown sugar, just brown in here, um, and then it'll go down, and this is what will coat the oxtails. Brown in the oxtails, in the olive oil, and with the brown sugar. So these will coat to the oxtails and help the caramelization process. We're gonna use lemon juice to add a little bit of acid to the dish. And so from here, I'll add in the jerk. This is the jerk that we keep in the house. So for people who aren't familiar with like a jerk spice, what, what is that? Um, it's, a, it's a Caribbean spice that has uh, scotch bonnets, green peppers, ginger, uh, soy sauce, uh, some fresh herbs, uh, some garlic. And it's just a spicy, spicy, earthy, uh, different type of uh, sauce that you can use on oxtails, you can use in, in chicken, you can use it in beef, fish. We can just add in our root vegetables. We have carrots, some English peas. We'll add in our bone broth. Once this is gone, we'll let this come up to a boil and then we'll let it simmer for about an hour and a half, two hours. Just until the oxtails start to pull away from the bones. Okay. And so we're done oh, here. Wow. And so typically, um, you can serve with uh, white rice, uh, pigeon peas and rice, um, pasta, whatever you like. Just, I mean, it's a, it's a stew, so it's really up to you. And you wanna get these little oxtail, the bones in here, because there's still meat on these, on these bones. All right, well, I'm gonna dig in then. How can I do this gracefully? You can. I know. I'm trying. Mmm. <laughs> that is good. Mmm, I can taste the brown sugar, that jerk spice. <laughs> Yum. Chef Duval certainly knows how to throw down in the kitchen so good. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of California Bountiful. Thanks for hanging out with us here at the San Diego Botanic Garden. And remember, you can always find us online at CaliforniaBountiful.com. I'm Aubrey Aquino. We'll see you again next week for more Bountiful stories. Until then, take care and have a great week. <music>